What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Um, today I have a special guest, Keith from Trigger Happy. I will link his Tundra video in the description below so you can follow along with his journey. But to give you just a little bit of insight to what's going on, this man here has a 2022 Tundra that has the wastegate issue. And I'm gonna let him tell his story. I have a few questions for him. But one thing I really wanted to get him on the channel for is I had a YouTuber not too long ago kind of hijack my comment section. And he had talked to Toyota and was kind of downplaying this. And myself, I would rather talk to someone that actually is in the shoes of the person having the problem rather than being in a company that is telling an individual that knows he's gonna tell the world um, what he wants the world to hear. And I'm not saying Toyota is doing that, but I know companies do that. They tell social media people what they want people to hear and you may not get the entire story. So I want to get the story from someone that is actually having the issue. So without further ado, again, this is Keith from Trigger Happy and he'll be linked in the description below. Keith, you want to tell us a little bit about what, um, what you experienced, kind of what happened to the truck when this uh, wastegate issue happened and kind of what they told you. Yeah, so I uh, purchased a truck. I got a call on, uh, I think it was the day after New Year's from the dealer. And I had been on a wait list for quite a long time, like everybody else. And got a call, hey, your truck's in. So that was on a Sunday, I believe. Um, it would have been like the, the second or third. And so I went in and picked it up on, on that Monday. Drove it for six days. So then on the following Sunday, I had the first error come up. The first uh, check engine light came on and said I had some kind of a parking brake assist malfunction, which the way I understand it, the truck's parking sensors know if you're going to hit something when you're backing into it, it will automatically hit by the brake. So I got an error on that, which I, I think is pretty common that people are seeing that error. So that was on Sunday. So I called my dealer on Monday. So this is the following Monday after I purchased it. It's got 300 miles on it. And I told him, hey, I need to get this in um, and have it looked at. They said, no problem. I did not drive it that day. So I went in on the following Tuesday and on my way to the dealership, which is about 30 miles from where I live, um, I'm driving on Interstate 77, going 75 miles an hour, and I get a another check engine light with another message that says reduce power, um, C dealer, you know, immediately or, or whatever the, the, the code says. And I knew right away that there was a, um, a problem with a turbo because you could feel the truck shutter and then it just, you know, kind of shut down the power. I still had the ability to drive 65 miles an hour, but you, you know, I, I didn't want to gas it. So I yeah. just, I just babied it, got it there. And, so they took it in. I told them that, hey, there's another issue. And so I sat there for about two hours waiting on them to come out and let me know what was going on. And I knew nothing about this wastegate issue at this point. And while I was sitting there, I'm, you know, I'm on Google, I'm on forums, and people are saying, hey, we're getting this error. And I see the famous picture that you have on your video of the, the cab off the, the frame. And so I kind of read about that. And, you know, I go, I, I go up to the service manager. I said, hey, I probably need to talk to the tech. And he's like, well, he's on the phone with Toyota. When he's off, he'll come talk to you. So he comes out and I said, is it a wastegate issue? And he's like, yes, that's absolutely what it is. And he's like, no problem. We'll get parts in and it, in a couple of days we'll have this fixed. And I said, well, what I'm reading said everything back ordered and it's going to be quite a while to get, you know, this serviced. So he's like, no, nah, I don't think that's the issue. So um, I went home. They gave me a loaner, gave me a RAV4 loaner, and I went home. Got so they didn't give you another 22 Tundra. <laughs> they didn't have another 22 Tundra. And I would have liked my trade-in Tundra was still on the lot for sale. And I did say, like, how yeah, about that truck? Because I know that one runs pretty good. Uh, but it did get that one, so uh. I got a RAV4. And uh, so the service manager called me later that day and said, yeah, hey, you're right, everything is back ordered. And I was like, yep, that's that's what I thought. And I said, what are they telling you? He's like, up to 30 days, may, maybe even more, um, depending upon shipping and all that stuff. And I said, are you actually going to have to take the body off of the frame? 
And he says, that's one of the ways. The other way is to actually pull the engine so you can do it either way. Yeah. I said, well, I really don't like that. Um, I'm going to talk to the general manager here. So I called the general manager. Again, this is last Tuesday. And I said, you know, really not thrilled with a truck that at this point had 335 miles on it, having to be disassembled by a tech that's never touched a 22 Tundra before. That's what I've been saying. And everybody's telling me, oh, no, they're going to send a master tech down there to do this. But I don't know if they've got enough master techs to send everywhere to fix these trucks. Now, they're saying there's only 10 trucks, but I'm seeing more and more pop up here and there. I am, too. I, you know, as I keep researching and as my video has, has been, you know, kind of seen more and more, I'm getting more and more comments on that video like, yep, I'm in the same boat. I'm, I'm getting this. And I've probably had eight or ten of those comments on my video so I would say it's a little more widespread than people want to believe. No. Um, but I, I talked to the general manager that day, and, you know, and, and he said, oh, we take caps off trucks all the time. And I said, there's a big difference between a brand-new truck that you've never touched and every Tacoma that you recalled that had 200,000 miles on them. You know, if you want to take the, the frame and, the, and the, the body off of my old Tacoma, you know, it's got 200,000 miles on it, I don't care. But not on a truck with 300 miles by yeah. a guy that's never worked on it before. I wouldn't I be happy with that. I've stated several times yeah. that I feel like there would be some squeaks once they got that done. I mean, I understand these people are trained and stuff, but it's hard to get every single bolt torqued back down exactly where it needs to be like it does from the yep. factory. And that, that was my thing that I said to not only Toyota, which I'll get to in your, here in a minute, but to the general manager, like... That truck was assembled in a factory by 150 different people, and guy number one's job was to put bolt A into hole A, and it moves on down the assembly line. Yep. This tech is going to do everything. Does he know the torque specs for everything? Does he know how to disconnect and reconnect the HVAC, the electrical? I don't know. He might, but I don't know. Well, it's and a brand new truck. Does he, has he been trained... Truck. I'm doubting they've been trained on these brand new trucks how to do this extensive. Now, maybe they did, but that's a lot of training in a short period of time for a brand new truck that's been out a month. Yeah, and this, this particular truck that I got is the first one that this dealership had. So, you know, they're all out there taking pictures looking at this truck. They've never even seen it before. You know, so I don't, I don't think anybody was flown to San Antonio to get a real breakdown on how this thing is put together at least at my local dealership that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, but that same day, I called Toyota Corporate. I started a case with customer care. Um, they got back to me on Thursday of last week. Um, guy called and he said, you know, how do you want to resolve this problem? And I said, you know, if you could tell me that this can be solved easily and quickly, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, but you just told and he told me as well, that the parts are back ordered. You know, who knows when it's going to come in. We're thinking mid-February. And I said, you know, that's, to me, that's a problem. You know, yep. I have a truck that I'm paying for. It's not in service. We just got a foot of snow. I'm driving a Lunar RAV4 when I paid for a truck. I want a replacement truck. Yep. You know, and he's like, Toyota's in no way able to do that. No way. Um, able like, to do that? As much money as possible? Like, you have to go through your dealer. It's like, you got to talk to your dealer. I can't authorize anything like that. And I said, fair enough. Put me, just let me talk to a district sales manager, a regional sales manager. Let me talk to somebody in engineering. Let me talk to somebody in production. And he's like, nope, those people are unavailable to talk to. I said, well, you know, okay. I, I'd like to at least tell them what is going on. And maybe they can assure me that, hey, this truck was designed to have the cab taken off really easily. It's a super easy process because we knew that someday they're going to have to work on these turbos and it's a really simple process. Okay. That's, that's cool. Fair enough. You know, if you, if you told me that's, you know, how this was designed. All right. But no. So Toyota corporate says, talk to your dealer. So, um, a couple calls to my dealer and, you know, I told them, Hey, I'd, I'd like a, another truck or some kind of game plan on what's going to happen with, with my truck. And there was never any, um, never really any response. You know, he's like, well, we've got a 1794 coming in 
And, you know, like, but that's not what I really wanted. And I don't think I should have to spend another $9,000 or whatever it is. Plus, you hit me, you know, they were talking about trading it in. Oh, you know, my gosh. On, on a trade. <laughs> let's, so, let's deduct some money off the trade here, then you pay right, full price yeah, for this so 7 94 Like, well, that's what we got. That's all we have coming. Sorry. Um, so, that was Thursday. Then Friday, I got a call from um, Toyota Corporate again. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My, with all this snow and all this, I'm, I'm confused. What did it say? Wednesday? So, no. yesterday. Okay. <laughs> yesterday, I got a call from Toyota Corporate. And they said, hey, have you heard from your dealer any updates? Anything? I said, not a word. I said, the conversation ended last week of, there's nothing we can do. That was it. He said, well, I'll conference in the general manager and we'll have a discussion. I said, okay. So the general manager was unavailable, assured me he'd call me back. Um, that was yesterday at about 11 o'clock. Nothing yesterday, nothing today. So um, I told the guy again from Toyota yesterday when we talked, you know, again, he, he kind of raised the question a second time. What do you want us to do? And I kind of went through the spiel again. And I mentioned to him, and maybe I shouldn't have done this. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I don't know what to do. But I said, in my state, any vehicle that's out of service for 30 days in the first year is considered a limit. So when you tell me that there's a parts backup and there's at minimum 30 days to get the parts, plus who knows how long to actually fix the truck, maybe days, maybe weeks, I don't know. We're over the 30-day threshold. It could legally be considered a limit at that point. I could pursue it. Now, whether I would win that case or not, I don't know. Why don't you, Toyota Corporate, just head this off and just send me a replacement truck? He's like, nope, can't do it. So that is the end of everything I've heard from Toyota and from my dealer. And I will preface this, and I should have started with this, not that I'm anybody special, not that I deserve any different service than anybody else, but Toyota's aware, because I told them up front, I have bought 13 Toyotas. I have bought 10 from this dealer. So I buy a lot of cars. You know, my wife's got a 2020 Highlander Platinum. You know, I've got this truck. I've had a lot of Toyotas. You think so, loyalty would be worth something? That's, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, a business where you know, I, I deal with sales and service. I'm an insurance business. And loyalty means a lot to me. Loyalty means a lot to my customers as well. And I thought, you know, hey, I'm a pretty loyal customer. I have not owned another brand of car except for my little work Volvo um, since I was, you know, 23 years old. So I've bought nothing but Toyota. And, you know, it just kind of fell on deaf ears. And I, my biggest gripe with this whole thing is... It's just been a complete black hole as far as information coming from anybody. Yeah. You know, the dealer has never said, hey, we're, we're trying. You know, we're, you know, and I, I said, lie to me. Tell me anything. I don't <laughs> care. Just call me. Tell Make me, me feel something. good. <laughs> yeah, just, just say, man, we have been on doing nothing but making phone calls day after day, and we're not getting anywhere. And I, I okay, that's cool. That's, that's fair enough, but absolutely nothing. Um you know, and, and I did. I said to the, the the guy at Toyota, I said, you know, I work in a again a service oriented business, and if I don't provide good service, my customers are going someplace yeah. else. And I said, I have a territory manager with with my main insurance company, and he doesn't like to talk to customers very often. But if it's a major issue, he's going to get on the phone and have a discussion with that customer and find out what the issue is and how the insurance company can fix the problem. But there's apparently no such person at Toyota with any kind of authority that I can talk to. And that's frustrating. Now, going back to the loyalty thing and kind of getting the run around here a little bit, that exact same thing happened to me with Ford. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier. My subscribers yep. have probably watched my Ford video. I was a Ford guy for a long time. After having a couple of bad Fords and my last one, Ford basically said, hey, it's yours. You know, kind of almost turned her back on me. I changed yeah. to Toyota. A bad yeah. experience can change your mind about, you know, a brand. I mean, it, it can. Whether you've been with that brand for 30 years, one bad experience can leave a bad taste in your mouth for a long time. Yep. 
Yep. It, you know, I, I mentioned this in, in my update video I did a couple days ago, but I was having a conversation with a friend, and he's a huge Bengals fan. And, hey, I'm a sports guy, but, you know, I said, this would be like Joe Burrow calling you and saying, thanks for the season tickets all these years. Thanks for being a Bengals fan. We don't need you anymore. Yep. And then, you know, Twitter was my team. You know, I mean, I have a... You got a banner behind your head. <laughs> you know, my son, he's he's a, he's 13. We showed up to buy this truck. This is this is the kind of nerd I am. I had a Toyota shirt on, and he had Toyota socks and a hat on. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's our team, you know? Yep. I mean, I wear Toyota gear like other people wear, you know, Cowboys shirts. It's just, it's just what I, you know, and so it, it was like a punch in the gut when your team is like, thanks for all the years of buying our product. You're not worth talking to. And no. that's what really hurt was just there's no loyalty there from – and like you had with Ford, they, they just act like they don't care. No. And that, that sucks. And yeah. the crazy thing is now they're getting this attention. And this isn't probably wanted attention. You know what I mean? I mean, right. you, you started your platform. You've got a decent-sized channel. And then it got my attention. I wanted you on my channel. Somebody else may want. I mean, it's just gonna move up yeah, the ladder. I, I, it ain't gonna I've get small. To other people as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I've had other other guys on YouTube and in different places reach out and say, you know, this is something that needs addressed. And you know, I feel like, and I, I said this, you know, in the video I, I uploaded the other day was, you know. I'm giving Toyota a lot of bad press, and I don't want to do that. Again, it's my team. I want to give I want to give a glaring review of how much I love this truck, and I was fully prepared to do that after driving it for a month or two and, and come out and say this truck is everything I wanted. But you know, they can resolve this not just with me, but with anybody having this problem because I think it's a pretty small number of people. No, we don't know. We it don't know. Thousands, yeah. or it could be ten. I don't know. Yeah. But they could step out and issue a press release like, hey, we realize that there's some issues with our trucks. We want to make our customers happy. So you are our first priority. And somebody commented on my channel, why do you think you take priority? And I said, I don't take priority over anybody else that owns the truck. But I do feel like I take priority over trucks that haven't been built yet. Yeah. So if there's fixed turbos, before you start throwing those upgraded or, 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 or proper turbos on a new production truck. How about shipping one on the truck that I already paid for? Here's my question. I've heard uh, the other YouTuber was like, there's like a low number, like 10. I forget what number he put out there, but it was like a real low number. Now, I'm in manufacturing, and I know that if they know there's only 10, and they know that to be sure, or whatever this low number is, they yep. can probably notify them people about you need to bring your truck back because it's going. Yep. And maybe they've all already had the problem. I don't know. Yep. But they can probably trace that to them trucks. And now I'm not saying that 100%, but being in manufacturing and knowing how it works for 24 years, yep. they can probably trace that back to them 10 trucks if that's all it is. Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the engineers um, that has a channel, the automotive press guy, um, kind of dove into the engineering of this. But he said, you know, hey, there would be a batch. Again, I'm not in manufacturing, but, you know, there be a, we would know the batch number of um, where, where it came from and the VIN numbers of the trucks. That yes. Made. And, and he, he said, oh, it's a small number. Like you said, if you know that there was 50 trucks that left San Antonio, Texas on the week of December 5th or whatever date it was, yeah, they know where those are. They know exactly where those trucks yeah, are. They know, know who bought them. You know, I thought beforehand, they used to sell firearms, had a gun business. You know, if Smith & Wesson called and said, hey, there's a recall on all, you know, of these certain pistols, with, I, can, I can find out exactly who bought it and yep. give them a call and say, hey, your, your pistol has been recalled. You need to bring it in for service. But, you know, that has not been done, and that's the frustrating part. And I'm like assuming said, Toyota hey, actually has like a scanning system where it puts it in the computer, whereas you probably had to go through paperwork. I had to go through paperwork. Yeah, yep. they, it should be yep. easier for them as, oh, yeah. for them to find the, you know, if it's that small. I'm not saying it's not the small number. I'm just saying if it is, it should be easy. If they if they know this batch was bad, and I don't know how many comes in batches, you know, there's different batches. So I, as small as that little thing sure. is, you think there'd be a lot of them made at one time, but maybe it's just a few faulty ones and then they caught it and fixed them, but they got mixed in with some other ones. But nonetheless, if they know it's just a small batch, 
they can probably find those VIN numbers pretty easily. I, I would guess. I don't know that, but I, I would guess. So. The, the one thing I do find interesting, and again, you, you're probably on some of the same maybe Facebook groups or things that I am, and you see people saying, hey, my truck was supposed to be delivered last week, but it's been delayed. It's been delayed for QA issues or, or whatever. To me, that seems like they obviously know there's a problem, and maybe we're still putting these faulty you know, wastegate turbos on trucks up until pretty recently. Because if if you had a build date of a week ago or two weeks ago and it was supposed to ship today and now they're pushing it out two weeks, again, I'm just speculating like, like we all are. Yeah. But maybe they said, hey, before these leave Texas, get those babies back in there and let's get the right parts on them. I don't know. If and that could be what they're doing. Like, maybe they're like a small batch you got out. And we know these were bad, so we're going to fix these before they leave. But they right. should still they should still fix the guys' trucks that have already paid for them because you paid for them. Don't right. be like I've got my money; I'm done. Send yeah. them one out immediately. Yeah, that's that's the thing that, like, say that you know, when, when that person says, "Why do you take priority?" It's like I understand there's a lot of trucks that and, and those are those are cash money that Toyota can put the bank that are on the production line right now. They already put my money in the bank. Yep. You know, so you sent me a faulty product. You know, I don't care if it's a vacuum cleaner or an Xbox. If it doesn't work, you know, I expect it to be serviced in a timely manner because I paid for it. Exactly. You know, that's, that, that's the thing. And we're not talking about a vacuum cleaner or an Xbox. We're talking about a $60,000 automobile. Yes. That I paid for it, and I just expect it to be fixed quickly. And you know? for all the people out there that's going to say there's a supply chain issue, they're still building trucks. Right. Take one of those trucks and send the parts to the 10 people or how many it is that need Don't them. Want. They ain't stopped Don't building trucks as far as I know for this issue. They're still yeah. building them. So, And that's, if you can't send me the part. And this is what I've said many times, and, and people like to disagree with this, and, and, and other people agree with it. But if you can't send me the part, then send me a new truck. Yep. That's that's the other thing. Or well, refund you know, your if, money. If my truck's got to, yeah. But if it's going to sit on the back lot for the next three months waiting to get fixed, send me a new truck. And yep. then you can take that one back and figure out what's wrong with it on your dime. Yep. But one or the other. I don't care which, but I just don't think I should have to be in a RAV4 loaner. Hey, Fishing season's coming, and I, I better be able to go fishing. <laughs> hey, when, I got to load my kayak somewhere. When our Mercedes tore up, they give us a loaner, and we were fixing to go to Florida, and it was only supposed to be a few days, and it wound up being like a week and a week or a week and a half. And I called them. I said, I'm fixing to go to Florida. I'm taking your vehicle. And they were like, no, you're not. Come get yours and drive it. And I was like, the windshield wipers don't work. You want me to take my vehicle that the windshield wipers don't work to a place that rains a lot? Every day. Yeah. And uh, we had a few words, and the manager called me back and said, if yours ain't done, you take ours. We don't want you driving, you know, an unsafe vehicle. But nonetheless, you know, it, it was, you know, the same thing. It was sitting there, and I was in a loaner, and I was fixing to do something I wanted to do, and I was going to take their loaner, but they were like, oh, no. Yep. 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 All right. That's the way I look at it, yeah. I mean, I, I, have, I have something to pull my trailer, put my kayak in, and a RAV4 with no hitch isn't going to do either of these things. So Just they got to get figured out. <laughs> yeah. I'll strap it to the top. Yeah. <laughs> Drill a hole in the back gate and put an eye bolt through it. <laughs> Big yep. <waters. laughs> That's right. I got good insurance. We'll tear it up. It's fine. <laughs> that's great that's great yeah. oh man that's great yeah uh, man i hate you're having this problem i really really do uh, i i appreciate it you know getting it out there too and i, I think um uh, it's just a car you know ultimately there there's you know i've said this because you know my customers uh, I, I was dumb enough to share this truck on youtube or i'm sorry on facebook yeah um, i got this new truck and i don't normally do that but i was pretty excited about it and I've had so many of my customers over the past couple of weeks like, hey, how's that new truck? Like, do you want to know? But ultimately, it's just a truck. There's so many other things that could be worse and wrong in the world um, that we could be dealing with. But, True. you know, hopefully hopefully it gets taken care of. And, and uh, you know, 
I'm not. Uh, I'm not throwing anybody. You know, I've never mentioned my dealer's name. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't want to throw them under the bus. Now, you know, if we get down the road and this this continues, then uh, they're, we're going to probably have words at some point. But you know, I'm still a local guy. I always deal local, and I I, I hope that they can uh, can help me out here because I I don't want to throw them under the bus yet. I I feel like it's a Toyota problem. No, I want you on that. Toyota needs to fix it. I'm with you on that. You know, I mentioned a YouTuber. I didn't throw him under the bus. And he right. hijacked my comment section in, in one of my last videos. I don't do that. I think that's distasteful. I would never go on someone else's channel and do that. Yep. But but I don't call people out like that either. Even a, even yep. I, had a, I had a small retaliation video one time against somebody that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I still didn't call them out. Yep. I let them know what I think. But yep. I didn't call them out. I t I, I'm just not that guy. I'm with you on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not either. I, I, I don't want to, you know, th there's a few comments I've made to other, uh, you know, commenters before that were maybe a little distasteful, but yeah, I'm, I'm like you. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get into that war with, with anybody and, and certainly not another local business where I, I'm at. Cause I, I, I believe in, in dealing local. I mean, yeah. you know, I've never been one of these guys that's going to drive to, a dealership 300 miles away to get a truck and expect my local dealership to take care of all my problems. You know, yeah. it's, you know, I bought it here. I want it fixed here. And that's kind of the way I look at it. But, you know, I, I'm hoping I am a little disappointed in them. And, and I, I will, I've said that to the, the salesperson, which has no authority in anything, but you know, I, I said, I am, uh, I am, you know, pretty disappointed in their lack of communication. But again, my scorn is really with Toyota for just completely no plan, no communication, you know, just, you know, I, I, I use the expression pound sand. And it, yeah. it kind of, it's kind of what I felt like the other day. Just, well, it was their go, problem. Go it ain't the day. dealer's problem. The dealer didn't build the truck. That's Toyota right. Toyota built the yep. truck. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yep. I agree. That's I would feel that way 100%. So. Yeah. Keith, man, I appreciate you being on the channel. I really do. Um, again, yeah, I'll link you in the description below so my subscribers can go subscribe and follow along with with your journey on trying to get this thing fixed or resolved. And I wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you very much. And it was, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate your time, man. All right. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.